Uh, this is uh, in Pali, and I'm trying to speak Pali, but I don't know how, so you have to bear with me as I pronounce these words, okay? This session is dedicated to a Buddhist Parinirvana Day, which occurs on the full moon. The new moon is Chinese New Year's, 4,722 years ago. And a Buddha's uh, birthday would be 2,589 years ago. Full moon, not the, not the new moon, which was Chinese New Year's, but the full moon. I just found that out. I didn't know how, when it was exactly, was it the 17th or, but anyway. And um, the caption of this was Buddha's unspoken words. So this is a very catchy, catching title. Uh, what what uh, brings forth unspoken words? Unspoken words is from no anger, no greed, no ignorance. Those are three. When that is uh, a cessation of that, when that cessation happens, to greed, anger, and ignorance. These are Buddha's unspoken words. And also they're your unspoken words. Because you have that, uh, you are endowed with that quality that you are trying to restore. Uh, that makes uh, Buddha one of the greatest human beings in, in humanity. So, uh, he, uh, the reason why he was great, because greed, you look around the world, you look across the street, you look in your home, you look in yourself, greed, anger, violence, and ignorance, and that is subsided, or uh, finished. Um, you are on your way to uh, realizing yourself. That the, those are the obstacles, and uh, it's interesting. Uh, what we think of obstacles are exactly not obstacles. Each obstacle you have, uh, there's an opening. I, I can mention to you a little bit later. Each obstacle contains the opposite, and that's the freedom. And shortly in meditation practice is to dissolve those opposites. When those opposites are dissolved, that also includes cessation of greed, anger, and ignorance. Uh, so in the beginning, I would say it's not permanent because we, we still have to make our foundation strong, really strong, so you can uh, bear witness or to anything, because you have a foundation. And the most important thing, do you have a foundation? Do you have something you can rely on? Think about it. What do you rely on? Your brain? Your heart? Just think about it. Okay, here we go. Atta dipa viharata atta sarana anana sarana dhamma dipa dhamma sarana anama sarana. I do it two more times. Atta dipa viharata atta sarana. Anana Sarana, Dhamma Dipa, Dhamma Sarana, Anana Sarana, Atta Dipa, Vyata, 
Atasarana, Ananda Sarana, Dhamma Dipa, Dhamma Sarana, Ananda Sarana. Okay, Dipa is light. Ata means you are the light. And you don't know it until you discover it, until you, you're restored uh, from your direct experience of Buddhist knowledge. You are light. Light is deep. Ah. And Vihara actually is a home or dwelling. This means dwelling. What do you dwell in? This is very interesting. Uh, the last couple of years, I found out where you're supposed to dwell. Not entertainment. We're not talking about entertainment. We're talking about self liberation and the liberations of others. Not just you, not what you owe, own. Okay? Uh, dwell. So that's an interesting word. Atta, again. Uh, this is the second phrase. It says, Atta means uh, rely. Atta. Rely on yourself. But this is not the self who you think you are. It's a much profound self. It has no name, no voice, no form. That's Atta Sarana. Sarana is, is the word for rely. Okay, Atta Sarana, do not rely on others. Oh, first is, you are the light, dwell. Okay, what are you going to dwell on? What do you have to dwell on? You can't sit cross legged wherever you go. What do you dwell on that's always with you? Second line, Atta Sarana, do not rely on others it's imperative do not rely on others we're going to rely on my mom or dad but they don't live forever nothing lives forever nothing you can lie is permanent you think about it what can you rely on huh do not rely on others. Atta sarana. And then ananna sarana. Dharma. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, do, oh, first it's rely on yourself. And then it's do not. It's imperative. Rely on others or things. I added that in. Things. <laughs> Rely, rely on your car. <laughs> do, I do, what do you rely on? Okay. Okay. And then again, Dhamma Deepa. Deepa is light. Dharma is light. The first line is you are light. Okay. Dhamma Deepa. Dhamma Sarana. You can only rely on the Dhamma. No, nothing else. You can rely on. You you should as you you must have a direct experience into Dharma. Then you you'll know what what uh, you are innately or endowed with. Because as long as we don't know that place, if, if we call it a place, you will rely on something other that's fictitious. And your life will be gone. You will die with that belief. So, first sentence Atta Deepa, you are the light. And um, now, now Dharma, Dhamma Deepa, Dharma is light. So, when you put those together, you are Dharma. 
And what is Dhamma? Dhamma is his, the university, his Buddhist teaching. Dhamma. And it's not man made. Because man made has a beginning and end. Dhamma Deepa. Dharma is light. Dhamma Sarana rely on Dharma. Last line. Ananda Sarana. Do not, this is the imperative again. Do not rely other than. So I gave this to a uh, so maybe 20 or 30 years ago. I can make some copies. This poem uh, for he was the Shuso in a Gadam Ango in Poland. Okay. In a Buddha's uh, Pati Nirvana, a very beautiful uh, picture. And uh, there's the full moon. Uh, I'll put this up on the bulletin board. And uh, Arhat, Bodhisattvas, animals, birds, all, all came to, to his Pati Nirvana, meaning that he, he's never to be reborn again. Nirvana means extinguished, blown up. He doesn't have to appear in another life to redo his karma, his habit energies until he's free. This is the Buddhist philosophy. And uh, the tree, the solid trees that are surrounding him turn white. This is a common phenomenon in Dharma. There's no outside and inside. <clears throat> so the full moon, Pai Nirvana, you know, one of the greatest persons in the history of humanity, because it, it was for his, not only his liberation, as the aura, self-realization, but for every human being's liberation. Um, I, I, we're, we were talking about opposites, and um, this is not, I, I, I apologize a little bit, because this is not in any order. <laughs> so, so anyway, here goes. Uh, Sando Kai, uh, that's the intimacy of the relative I am so. Or the oneness. And the opposites, subject, object, long and short, male and female, it's the oneness, the intimacy of the relative and absolute. You can't think it out. You have to sit to clear your thinking. In, in fact, even not to think. Where do your thoughts come from? Your mind source. You're looking in, not out. Soon, soon as we were born, karma was created. At birth, from your mom, that's oneness. Out, now that's two. So the separation started already. And then with, because you had the feet, it was over there. It wasn't here. It wasn't here anymore. It was over there. Over there, separation. Culture, tradition, education, media, you name it, confirms that separation. So meditation practice is going back to the oneness and even beyond that oneness, what we call oneness. So here's two phrases I was captured by in the Sando Kai. I mean, these are sutras we chant every day, but they have meaning, really deep meaning, profound meaning that will free you from yourself, your idea of yourself, which creates, it's a habit energy, which creates karma, not karma, because you see things 
in a conditional way, short, long, beginning, end. And, and you live by those conditions because we were taught that. So it takes some time to unravel, really to unravel this knot. So uh, these two lines capture me uh, for some time. When there's light, there's darkness. But don't try to understand this. When there is light, there is darkness. But don't try to understand it because you can't think it out. You can't understand it. It's not an object. Second line. When there is darkness, there is light, but don't look for that light. It's the same thing. So, um, how do you do this? So in Zazen, I believe that you will go to some place where there's no thinking. And what does no thinking mean? It's the instant before or after the moment of the present. It's not even the present. It's before and after the present. The instant before or after the moment of the present. <laughs> it's really, I mean, that's a proof profound because we're just we're just barely on the surface we're th just thinking about Jesus I wish was, I was in the present moment but it's the instant before or after the present moment that's where we're going you have to know where you're going and um, what what uh, controls that or what makes it our habit it's because we think, it's because we discriminate. Thinking produces discrimination. Discrimination produces expectation. Expectation produces knowing. It's before those four. And that's the, that's the, that's the prize in school. That's our education. We taught to think. I mean, I'm not saying thinking is bad. I'm, I'm talking about non-thinking before you think your thinking will be much more clear and shorter because you don't have to think that much because <laughs> the other one is about subject and object this is about this is about what we call non-arising of thinking so this is something that you already have that you must know, but you have to have some kind of training and practice to to let it come out. And that practice in Zen, of course, is the sitting. Lots of sitting. Uh, so you will go to this place called non-arising of thinking, which means there's, there's no, no thinking. And that's why people become attached to sitting because they have arrived at that place because it's more than calm. It's more than serenity. It's more than equanimity. It's deeper. But the student still has to realize it. That's what he or she has already that's what we have already they are yet to realize it and the teachers there to point it out i think uh, for myself i didn't know that for a very long time uh, well the one example would be uh, the all night city when we came here uh, in 1973 there was a concrete floor and there were no battens on the walls. And I think it was snowing. And 
the Rohatsu means uh, Tetsuya means the four hour sitting, and it's in honor of what Buddha did as he sat through the night. Uh, it's tradition, but it it's not just historical meaning, but it has a purpose in pushing you through something. And either either be pain, not to hurt yourself. There is pain. There's a lot of uncomfort. There's sleepiness. You, you can imagine sitting four hours is quite a long time, and you get your body gets tired. But the first time we did it here, the bell uh, or the the wall ended right there, and from this temple pillar to the Dokdan room was with the tractor ship, concrete floor, no lights up here. And um, we sat, oh, I sat facing this way, and the people sat facing this way. So it was, I think it was about 50 people during that time. Bell rang to begin Zazen. Bell rang, and it seemed to me five minutes. But I didn't know what had happened. But I, I knew I, I accomplished something. I did some, something happen. So every year after that, I tried and I failed completely to repeat the same thing. I failed enormously until years, maybe 20 years later, or maybe even 30, whenever we did the Rohatsu, I gave up the idea to repeat it. I accepted actively accepted anything that came in front of me or in my mind. If I was restless, it's okay. I wasn't sitting to be perfect. Uh, if I was sleepy, if I thought a lot, if I worried a lot, I accepted everything. Hey, how about your regular life? Try it something you can rely on. We don't accept it. We hardly accept anything. So therefore, we, we don't receive anything. Until final, that's, that was my final days. And then the, a couple of, uh, of Rohatsus after that, just after this year, I realized what contemplation of the mind means. And this is what Bodhidharma, what Buddha, what Dogen, what Tsuka Roshi handed down to us. Okay? Okay. So this non-arising of thinking, this is this is a realization where you sit maybe two hours, three hours, maybe just one hour, one thought. That's all. Two hours, maybe two or two thoughts. But as long as it's a thought, it's not thinking. One thought is not thinking. It's good to have one thought because that means you're alive. If you have no thoughts, you're dead. Okay, two thoughts is thinking. So when the thinking has ceased, you, you, you uh, come into what we call the forbearance of non-arising. It's, it's, this is a realization. And it means nothing has arisen Nothing now arises, nothing will arise. That's it. You could do it well. Okay. And um, you know the sutras are uh, great realizations that's been transmitted for for a long time, two thousand five hundred eighty nine years to now. And I I feel 
not, not just the Buddha Dharma, but everything around the world is at a very, very low extreme point. And Oyama, Ayoyama Roshi, she's the, uh, the Zen master of the nunnery. She holds the highest position in Japan. Finally, they, they made her equal to the Eheji abbot, the Zenji. She sits at the same level. Finally, they did that. And also, in the last ceremony that uh, Miyose went to in Los Angeles, Sotoshu, they translated all of it into English. They never did that before. They're handing us the torch. And Ayoyama Roshi, for her transmission ceremony, Kashin took pictures. She invited all her uh, disciples and nuns to watch in this, the transmission ceremony. That was kept secret only between the Geshe and, and the Zen master because she wanted not to be lost. You know? This is how, this is where we are. We're not in any advanced stage at all. Okay? Oh, so coming back, uh, and you know, when, when you, your resolve is strong, my resolve was strong because I, uh, I couldn't, I, I wasn't, uh, I couldn't speak very well in, in my regular life. And I was, uh, I didn't have uh, confidence. So I was kind of withdrawn. And so, you know, that's how I, I lived my life until I knew that this is not good because this will make me crazy if I stay here and find uh, uh, Zen was hardly even a dictionary during that time, but Tsuku Roshi came and I was able to meet all the greatest teachers of the first wave of the Zen masters that came to Japan. Now they're all, actually they're all dead. So I, I was fortunate to be in that position. So what I'm trying to say is that you are on the path, but it's not just you only. If your resolve is strong, Buddhists and Bodhisattva will come, will appear to help you. You don't do it alone. That's, that's how I felt I was lucky. For instance, uh, here's an example of the Taiwanese uh, monks that came and uh, the late, uh, Shen Yin, uh, le they left the scroll. And there were maybe four or five characters. The first one was like a happiness. And the second, it was for new, they, when did they come? Do you remember when they left the scroll? September 3rd, September yeah. 2nd. Oh, last year. Oh, oh yeah, at, at the Shinsan Shiki Center. So, so if you left the scroll, first first character is uh, happiness. Second character is uh, a compassion, and the last character was uh, con, con and doi. Doi, that's Cantonese, Southern, Southern language, Doi means right on, okay, on it. Okay, so happiness, uh, they would translate it blessings, blessings of compassion, uh, contemplation, on. So this is, this is what Bodhidharma relied on. This is what Buddha relied on. This is what Dogen relied on. Contemplation means clarifying the mind. It means the non-arising of thinking. 
That's all Bodhi Dharma did was nine years. And that's that's where your zazen should go. Hardly any thinking, and you can produce it at will with a strong foundation. That's what you need to do. So, um, you you have to say that the teachings and the ancestors, they were just great people. Could they left us their wisdom and knowledge? They didn't just keep it and die. They left it for us so we could we could know what to rely on. Nothing has arisen. Nothing now arises. Nothing will arise. Conscient, clarifying mind, no thinking. And again, I'm not saying thinking is a bad thing. Thinking too much, maybe. So with all this uh, projection and uh, grasping and owning these things, we're all outside of ourselves ever since birth. And uh, our teachers like uh, Raja Banzu, uh, who helped create the Yogacara School, uh, knew from, the, from their own experience through meditation, it was not outside. So they created a philosophy called mind only. Mind only, you shin. Because once it's outside, uh, well, first of all, how could you recognize anything if it wasn't here first? Then, uh, when you see, see a beautiful sunset, it's here already. It's not out there. That's a big mistake. In fact, that's most of humanity's mistake. It's out there. But it's here first, then there. Anyway, maybe it's a little bit too much, but um, yeah, we, we have some time for questions. We step back into the relative. If no questions, then I'm going home. <laughs> Yes. The, uh, you mentioned if one thought arises, then well, if if it's, one thought arises, that's yeah. okay. Then, but it's just one thought. Two thoughts is thinking. Yeah. So is that kind of like the uh, teaching of not following the thought? Yeah, it's letting the, it go. Non. It's the forbearance. Uh, Maybe forbearance is too big yeah. of a word, but it's mm -hmm. the practice for training of non-arising. And then 10 minutes later, another thought comes. Yeah, that's fine. They're not related. Yeah, not Unless related. You connected them. They're, they're not related, yeah. even if they're the same, uh -huh. because 10 minutes has, something yeah. has changed okay. in 10 minutes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Huh. Sounds kind of like impossibility or, because- no, That's been my experience at, various times and, and it was uh i was just you know concerned that like if another one 10 minutes later comes up then you didn't make that test yeah there's no connection yeah yeah it's good yeah um last week you mentioned something about completion of the self 
Can you talk more about that? That's liberation. What is that? That's realization of your essence, of your self nature, of who you really are. So, um, Roshi, you, you said you left things for us, died and left things for us. I think it's our sacred duty to do the same. Well, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let, let's see, uh, do you remember uh, De Sassani, uh, Co Koreans, uh, well, I, I, I would say all Korean, but in a sense, mm -hmm. made things very short. So uh, he, he always said, don't, don't make, don't make anything. That's what he meant. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, non-arising. It's it's uh, in our culture tradition. It's non-producing, non-productive. That's that's the essence because we're always producing. We're always making something, and that's the habit and energy that keeps us going around and around in samsara. It, it doesn't liberate yourself. So he just said to her, "Don't make anything." He was yelling at us. Yeah. But you really meant it. Don't make anything. Because we're always making something. Yes. Thank you so much for the wonderful yeah. talk. Thank you. Um, uh, could you explain more about where we're going? when we have the Zen, you said just instance before and after the present. So could you explain more about that meaning? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, psychology and some, some kinds of philosophy aren't going to be in the present moment. Even even in religious uh, things, they, they want you to be in the present moment, but it's before, because you're not thinking about it. It's before the present moment. Like when a NBA, uh, she's, he or she is shooting a basket, it's it's not in the moment. It's before the moment when the mind is not thinking. It can't, it won't go in. If you're thinking it should go in. It's before the thought or after, after the present moment. There's no thought, no thinking. Just stay with before, that's good enough. <laughs> that's it. That's half of it. If you got half, you got the other half. Yeah, it, it's interesting. When, when you get one part, you get all the other parts. But we want to get all the parts. That's what but one before thinking is pretty good. Yeah, but it, it's, it needs training. Yeah, because we don't we don't think that way. Yes. So when we when we talk about um, you know, how the rest of the world is forgetting the teachings and uh, at a extreme low. Um, and then how the old teachers, you know, left us this dharma that is to be treasured and, and cherished. Is this, you know, is this dichotomy not also duality and thinking? No, I don't think so. You know, things wear down. Nothing is permanent. In, in fact, I, you know, in the Dharma, they have these stages. I, I forgot what the names are. Mapo, Bupo. And there, there was a, a time when, when the Buddha was alive. After he died, it, the vibrancy of the Dharma was maybe 100 or 200 years. And then, then 500 years, it began decaying. And now we're, we're in the Mapo, the last 1,000 years. 
you, you could take this as a duality or not, but it's a teaching. Whatever, whatever, whatever you want, want to think about. But, but we were in a low stage. But who came up with that? Huh? Who came up with that that idea? Well, that that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't say who did. <laughs> who, who discovered? Or well, maybe Buddha did. He, maybe before he died. I don't know exactly, but it, it's in. Uh, you could look it up in a dictionary. Okay, but nothing, nothing stays, stays forever. It's impermanency. That's why Zen is good because it's before the present moment. Because everything is changing. It's just dot, 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 dot. Nothing. It's not a straight line. What we're trying to make. That's why we end up suffering. And that's when you have your realization before the happy energy kicks in. And then it's gone, and then here it is again. Then it's gone, then it's here. Unless it's really strong, but it's here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>